to uh, Luke chapter 14. Would you go there with me? Uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 1, it says, um, It happened as he went into the house of one of the rulers of the Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath that they watched him closely. And then, he, and then Father, this is when a certain man who had the dropsy, he gets healed. Then he tells the parable of, uh, of being invited. And, and uh, there's another parable. Let's just read that one real quick. Uh, Luke 14, verse 7. This is the other parable that goes along just before that other story. So he told a parable to those, Luke chapter 14, verse 7. So he told a parable to those who were invited when he noted how they chose the best places, saying to them, when you are invited by anyone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in the best place, lest one more honorable than you be invited by him. And he who has invited you and him come and say to you, give place to this man. And then you begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down in the lowest place, so that when he who invited you comes, he may say to you, friend, go up higher. And then you will have glory in the presence of those who sit at the table with you. For whosoever, whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. And then he also said to him who invited him, now this is this all taking place at that Pharisee's table. He's in the house of one of the rulers of the Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath. And then he says this. He says to him who invited him, when you give a dinner or a supper, do not ask your friends, your brothers, your relatives, nor rich neighbors, lest they also invite you back and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, who are they supposed to invite? Invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you shall be repaid at the resurrection of the just. Now when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And that's where if you um, open up the Christ object lessons, you'll find out that she does later a little bit about those that, like me, want to keep the peace with the family and are not willing to share this kind of hard gospel, some somewhat difficult gospel to, to hear. Now, it's easy for you and me to say, well, we're not the Jews, um, you know, and uh, we didn't reject, we didn't reject Christ. But what did happen in the year 70 AD for those that the gospel was sealed and they had rejected Christ? What happened in 70 AD? This is not a rhetorical question, tell me. The Romans came and what did they do to the city of what? Jerusalem. It was destroyed. And those who Christians who had believed the words of Jesus that said, when you see this city encompassed round about with the armies, uh, they stayed or they had already left. There was like a false uh, encompassing. And those who were believers went and followed the words of Jesus. They left the city. And then when the army came back, those who were still carrying on their, their Jewish religion, truly having rejected Jesus, truly having said that was not the Messiah, we crucified a man, and we have no king but Caesar. They had sealed their fate. They had sealed their rejection. Then, then just like in the parable, the king came with arm, the armies were sent, and their city was burned to the ground. How sad. How sad. So it's really easy for me to just say, um, it's going to be, um, Patty, you can go to the, uh, the pan now. It's going to be real easy for me to say, oh, that's history. I would never have been one of those people who, when it was time for the Hosannas, to say Hosanna and then... Could you try again? Siri wants to... Siri said she didn't get that. Could I try again? Um, <laughs> she's supposed to be quiet. I would not be one of those people. I can say to myself, and you can start to play a little bit of something there, um, that, that uh, I wouldn't have been there on Palm Sunday, you know, yelling out, Hosanna, Hosanna, and then on, 
uh, Good Friday yelling out, crucify him, crucify him. Never. That would never be me. No, no, no. Not me. Not me, God. I wouldn't do that. I would never reject you as king and, and, then, and then, you know, decide that, that, that I'm, I'm not coming to your supper. Oh, but wait a minute. Deborah, when you wake up in the morning and you have a busy day, and the Holy Spirit's calling to you, saying, you know, you need to pray this morning. You need to pray for those kids at that school where you can go that Satan does not have control of their lives. You need to pray for those family members that you are really pretty much afraid to talk to because you know they're going to reject you. And they're not going to take me out and beat me and slot, slew me like the, uh, the parable says. But I need to pray. I need to spend some time with Jesus. So have we insulted the invitation? I'm just asking. I had to go to Bible college to find out that you need to have a special time with God. And maybe some of you went there and had special time with God. But I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't know how valuable it was to read the Word every day and to uh, spend time with Jesus before the day starts and get up early. You know, we're used to getting to spend time in that truck with you and God all, all over this whole country. You weren't even interrupted unless God had called you. Hey! Hey! Or Mom. Or Mom. But, you know, some of us get to spend time alone and some of us don't. And we have to make time for it, don't we? And so my invitation to you is to not reject the invitation that Jesus is calling us to. Yeah, we might not have uh, done with those... We might not have rejected the gospel, but have we rejected the invitation to spend time with Jesus? And so that's that's the simple message I've got today. We see this parable, we see how bad it turns out for them. And so I've asked Patty to sing a special song. And after she's done singing that song, I'm gonna to talk to you just a tiny bit more. But I want you to take this into our take this into my heart. You know, how 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 insulted have I, how much have I insulted my king by refusing to spend time with him? It's a beautiful song. Patty, when you're ready, you take it.
stand for the closing song?
And for everyone who's here in this congregation, Lord, that we will renew our commitment to spend time with you in your word and in your in prayer, in song, in praise, and in thoughts. Teach us, keep us, for we ask it in the precious name of Jesus. The church said, Amen.